Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today I want to show you how to do some watercolor flowers. I've been painting these really simple flowers with watercolor in my sketchbook, and the more I did it, the more I thought it would look super cute either as a nice piece that would be a great seasonal kind of spring piece framed in your home, or maybe on a card. So I'm going to show you from start to finish how I created this entire painting, and along the way you're going to actually learn how to paint quite a few different flowers in the process. The key to this is going to be keeping it nice and simple, because simplicity is really part of the charm of this, and it's going to be easier than you think, so let's get started. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be using some Canson XL 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. I'm also using my set of watercolors, the Unicorn Food Palette, and my Wonder Brush. If you don't have these, that's totally fine. This is a size 12 round brush. You're going to need something similar to that in order to do some of the effects. You can make it work with whatever you have. And pretty much any set of watercolors is going to work great for these. You can just adjust to your color preferences because they're flowers and they come in all sorts of different colors. Of course, I also have my two cups of water and my rag so that I'm ready to go. Now, I know that I want to actually put this one in a frame, so I'm working on a 9 by 12 piece here, and I have a frame that has a mat in it that's 8.5 by 10, so I'm going to make a couple marks in here just on the side so that I have some boundaries, knowing that I should not go kind of beyond those 8 by 10. So about a half of an inch from the bottom and the top is going to be cut off, as well as an inch from either side, so that I just kind of know where I need to orient these flowers. You can definitely pre-cut your piece of paper so that it fits perfectly in there, but I actually like to work on a slightly larger piece of paper, especially when I have a matting, because it gives me more options when I am done to play around with the placement of it. I can move it, you know, a half inch here or there in order to make it slightly more compelling, depending on the way I have decided to paint it. The way we're going to be painting these flowers is we're going to kind of move between a couple of them because we need to let certain layers dry, and we're going to start off with something that's kind of similar to, I modeled it off of like a mum type flower, one that has a ton of the little petals on it that kind of reach up to the sky. It could also be something similar to a straw flower or a zinnia. You can use your imagination on this. And for mine, I am putting some pinkish color in it in a fairly light wash. And I'm just going to be taking that brush and I'm going to be just laying it down so the tip of it just drags and I just put a little pressure and I make that kind of in a little half moon shape so that I get those little points sticking out from that center point. I have decided to do three of these within my painting. Depending on the size that you're painting, you might want to do more or less of them. And I'm also going to intentionally make sure that I vary the heights on these just to give a little more visual interest within the piece. I often find that if you have everything kind of all at the same height, your eye just gets kind of stagnant on it. But that's just a personal preference, so you can make your own choices on kind of the different heights and how many you place in of these. Before we do anything else to those flowers, we actually want them to dry because I'm going to be doing a bit of layering on them. So I'm going to actually kind of put in a supporting piece in here, which is a piece of greenery, some eucalyptus, and I'm going to start by mixing up a nice slightly muted teal blue green color. I love putting in eucalyptus in any sort of bouquet that I make because that color is just so calming and beautiful and they have such an interesting shape and they smell great. After I make that color, I'm simply just going to kind of decide the direction and where I want to place this, and I'm going to make that center stem for it, just down the page. Not being too careful or precise about kind of the thickness or the direction, because I want there to be some variation. It's a natural thing, and I want it to feel a little natural. Now, eucalyptus leaves are really interesting in how they are placed. They're typically placed as doublets on the opposite sides of the stem, and they're placed at pretty even intervals down that stem. They do get a little bit bigger as they go down the stem from the ones that are at the very top, which are a little bit smaller. And what we want to do is just kind of create the illusion. So instead of taking my brush and then dragging along the length of it, I'm instead going to place it down kind of horizontally, and I'm going to pull towards me while it's being held horizontal, which is going to give these kind of unique and interesting more squared off or rounder shapes than what we got previously. I'm going to make sure that I keep that spacing pretty consistent, and on some of them I'm only going to make it so you'd only be able to see one, because the way that these work, sometimes you only, from your perspective, can see one of those leaves. Maybe it's up a little bit, maybe it's down a little bit. 
And on some I'm going to make that same motion, but I'm going to go up on one side and then maybe a slightly smaller one on the other side to kind of show that maybe it actually has two in some places that you can see. You can definitely keep the eucalyptus there. I am going to come back and do a little bit more on it in a second layer, but I need that to dry, so I want to move on to some buttercups. For these, I'm just going to put some very light yellow into my brush, and I'm going to make about four really loose strokes that kind of come out from the center, but don't quite touch in the middle. I may even wash my brush after I place down those initial yellow strokes and kind of soften them towards the middle, and I'm kind of trying to avoid that middle part because I do want to place a little bit of that nice bright orange color in the center and I want some of it to bleed but I want some of it to stay where it is and be a little bit more vibrant. Again I will be revisiting those buttercups in another layer so it's time to move on to another flower which is the lupine or this one's kind of inspired by something like a lupine. I'm going to mix up kind of a purpley blue color and I'm going to be using a similar stroke to the very first flower we made to make those nice tips, except for I'm going to be separating them. White space is going to be your friend on this. I'm going to start with one that's oriented straight up and down and then as I move down I'm going to kind of angle the side ones out a bit to give it that look of kind of fullness. This is going to get a little bigger as you go down and those brush strokes are going to be a little more condensed a little bigger as you move downwards. Don't forget to keep some white space in there because it's going to be key for the stem as well as kind of creating the illusion of this flower. If you want to add in some variety to the color, you can go ahead while it's still wet and drop in a couple other colors. I dropped in some blue just to give some variation as it moved down so that it kind of changes colors a bit. And then depending on how much water and things you used in your first layer, it might be time to actually move back through some of these. Again, for me, mine were fairly dry. So on those mum type flowers, I just went ahead and mixed up a slightly more muted but also purplish red color. And I added in some more of those taps so that I could just have another layer to add in a little more dimension to those and maybe how the light is hitting them. Simple watercolor paintings like this are all about the illusion and imagination and so sometimes just these simple little things are really going to help bring it together. The key is to not overwork this when you're trying to do a simple painting like this. Keep it nice and simple or don't. This is your painting. It's totally up to you. Still on those mums, if you want to have a real good definition between that bottom part of that bud and the stem and the flower, you want to let them dry completely. I kind of like them to bleed together maybe a little bit. So I go ahead and mix up a nice green color and I make that bottom bud while that bottom layer of the flower is still wet so that it just barely bleeds together and then I just swipe down for a nice stem. As I mentioned before, varying the heights of these flowers is going to kind of be key for visual interest. So you can choose some different flowers that are going to maybe fit into spaces. And for me, one of those flowers I'm going to place in is a hyacinth. For this, I'm going to modify that purple color I made for the lupine by adding in a little bit more blue because I want it to be slightly more blue than purple. And I'm just going to use my brush to kind of stipple down. I'm going to do a similar thing to what we did with the lupine. I want it to be looser and a little bit messier. It's going to have a nice kind of tip to it. It's going to be a little bit round. It's going to be basically a teardrop shape and white space, as with all these other ones, is super key to this little flower. If you want to, you can always go back in and drop some additional color in there if you want to have some variation. Next up, I'm going to go in and add some more detail or at least some more pigmentation to my buttercups. And I really encourage you to take a look at what's happening in your buttercup and make decisions that might be different than the ones that are happening on my page because you might have slightly different effects. All I'm trying to do is accentuate some petals, make some a little bit brighter, make there be a little more definition in some areas, but keep that nice loose softness and then also add in a little bit more pigment to that center in order to give it that nice burst of that kind of orange color in the center. Then now is a good time to add in some additional details like some of these stems for the different flowers. Some of them you can drop in some different leaf type shapes, keep them simple if you want to. None of this has to be exactly perfect as to how you'd see it in nature. This is our interpretation and our goal today is to make a super simple watercolor painting using just a few brush strokes because sometimes doing these is really helpful to kind of unlocking some other ideas when you keep it nice and simple and you can see how much some simple brush strokes will actually do. For the hyacinth, they usually have really nice long leaves. And for that lupine, I'm going to actually 
in some of these center areas where there's enough white space, I'm gonna indicate just a few strokes within there to kind of show that that center stem goes all the way throughout because on the lupines there is usually some visible space to the stem where you'd be able to see that. At this point I kind of felt like I still needed a little bit something else in here. It felt like it was very heavy towards the top so I wanted to place another really bright color that I hadn't seen within this a little bit lower down just to kind of vary the visual interest of this and so I did this one that's it's kind of inspired by a snapdragon but not exactly where all the different little petals are completely separated so i just did a light wash of red and i just placed a couple little dots did not intend for any of them to be perfect or any specific shape and then i just took a nice bright green color with the tip of my brush and kind of all connected them into the center stem and added a little bit of greenery at the bottom we're getting really close to actually finishing this up. There's just some final touches that I want to do. My buttercups I liked, but I did feel like I got a little too heavy handed with the yellow. So I went ahead and I lifted out a little bit of that color right on those petals just to kind of make them pop out a little bit more in the center part. And then in addition to that, I also wanted to add another one of those mums just to again kind of balance out the weight of this composition. Another final touch that I want to do is add some of those dark spots and shadows to things. So on the mums themselves, on the bottom part of those different buds, I did add in a little bit darker blue-green just to kind of really show that that's at the very bottom. And I'm also going to do kind of a similar thing on the eucalyptus where I'm just going to touch right at the bottom of this with a slightly darker color on the different leaves. And then I'm going to wash my brush and then just use that kind of damp brush to soften up into that so that there's some variation on those. You don't have to do any of these final steps if you don't want to, if you like how it is. That's totally fine not to do any of these. But if you want to add in a little variation, these are some really nice kind of final finishing touches that you can do that will bring just a tiny bit more dimension to this. Because that mum was a last minute addition to this painting, I am going to use my hair dryer in order to kind of speed between the layers so that I can go ahead and dry that first layer and then add on my kind of darkened purpley red color before adding in that stem so that this can actually be more of a completed piece. Once it's nice and dry, then it's time to actually place this in a frame. This little composition here would be really lovely on any sort of a card, like a great Mother's Day card or a Happy Spring card or something like that. But the style of this was kind of meant to be where it looks really polished because it's kind of in a frame and I like that kind of juxtaposition between the really looseness and then the polishness of the frame so that was kind of intentional and as you can see here when I put this into the mat because I didn't do it on an exact sized piece of paper you can see I can kind of move it around and I can move it down and over to the side just to play with kind of the position of the flowers and how it looks and then once it's actually framed I just absolutely love how this looks. This is the perfect little springtime edition or really any time of the year edition if you really like flowers. But one of the things that I've been actually kind of doing a lot of videos on, especially on TikTok and things like that, is these little paintings and things that you can do that are interchangeable for the different seasons. So that one, you get to do some different art and then maybe the intention is to only have it hanging up at certain times of the year so that if you have a hard time committing to some art, this is an interchangeable kind of yearly tradition of you're going to change it over between holidays and seasons and things like that. Kind of like a wreath, but in a slightly different format. Let me know in the comments what holiday or season I should do next for one of these. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I hope that you have a magically creative day.